five, four, three, two. Don't get get away. What? What? Just no. One. Do, do. one. <gasps> I freaked you out. What's up, everybody? You got faked out I'm by me. I'm Judge James. I'm Judge Dee Dee. And that was a really, really, really dusty Babu Frick. That's really disgusting. Yeah. Look at Can this. I put my hair up? Look at this. I don't know. Let's put my hair up. Hi, Greg. This is nasty. Hope everyone's having a good night and stuff. And we're having a good night. I just did some painting. Oh, I'm Judge James. I'm Judge Dee Dee. And there's dust around us. And together, we are living for crits. The most popular and longest running father-daughter role-playing game tabletop show of shows. Woo! Do you have paint on your leg? Yes. I can't get all the hair. I've been painting a lot of blue tonight. I've been doing much, much, much blue. <laughs> Can anyone see over there? Okay, let's see. You move your arms, you mean. Like, put your arm can't. down. There's a blue snake over there. Surprise. I'm, I'm hey, Popper Knot. Hey, Manjo Ban. Um, anyway, all right, well, this is us. And uh, yeah, we were off last week. Sorry about that. I, I wasn't feeling that great. It was technically Oscar night, which in our family has always been a big deal, but it isn't anymore because we don't watch any of the shows. It's a big deal. But what, what movies did we watch that were besides Onward and um, Soul? Um, that were I nominated. Part of that one movie was mom. Which one movie did you watch? The black and white one. What black and white one? I don't know. It's called. Some black and white movie with mom? Is yeah. that what it's called? Yeah. So, I don't know. I don't tell y'all. I put it up. I put it up. I put it up. Uh, let's see. Well, we, I mean, some news. We're like 144 Twitch followers. That's pretty cool. Yeah. You know? And we've got. You know, quite a few YouTube followers. I was gonna say, if we hit 200 Twitch followers, we should do something crazy. Like what? Shave my head. No. I'm trying to find an excuse no. to shave my head. Did you watch Octopus Teacher? No. I do want What's to. That? I do like Octopi. You know, they're a big part of Numenera. I used to play Numenera a lot. I so like Octopi. this shirt is not is not sitting well. My shirt's just. This shirt says, "This is the way." By the way. Yeah, my it's Alice in Wonderland. But it's not sitting well. But yeah, I was painting tonight for quite some time. I've gotten back into painting miniatures. It's terrible though. If you can see, like this whole area over here is a disaster of unpainted Reaper bones. That's bad. I mean, I feel ashamed at how much backlog of painting I have. And a 30 days, 30 miniatures isn't going to cut it. I'm going to like do, do like 150 days no, 500 miniatures a whole year i can't do a, look I, what i'm doing is i'm just gonna work a little bit every day and not a try to year. set myself up to having to do so many a whole year no a whole year no yes yeah, so um, squishy thing it's all bad. right let's move into the next part of the show wait i think Why i think i hear like i think i hear coffee is there coffee that's, that's ridley. ridley ridley what's up did you bring me coffee no, he didn't bring us coffee. It's so wiggly. Our dog just arrived without coffee. Is there coffee? No one's answering. I don't want to see the next part of the show unless there's coffee. Wait a second, everyone. There might be coffee. Guys. Move that a little bit. Oh, look, there's hey. coffee. Hey. Hey. We've got coffee. Um, Train my kids to paint. Transparent. I tried. It was a mess. <laughs> it didn't do a great job. Paint. You don't want to paint, I Clink. Know. I think I'd be awful at it because I can't sit still. Judge, if you preside, let's do that part next. Ooh. This is the part of the show where if you want to send a question and have Evie give you a crappy answer and I give you a real answer, you can send that question to dccjudgeevie at gmail.com. I'm telling Freckles, Who are you texting? Freckles is on the show and she asked a question about it. Well, then you can we can answer Freckles' yeah, question. No, she asked, she just said she was on, so I told her oh, to talk okay. to Oh, okay, that's fine too. Yeah. Oh, I screenshotted them. I don't know why. Greg is out of magic ideas. With permission, switch to monsters. Yeah, we'll do some monster wraps. I got a question from Brian. We got. Let's do okay. this. These are from last week. Let's do this. I know we work. I know. I know. Uh huh. Okay. How do I pronounce that? What? I don't know. 
I don't want to like be mean. It's it's preguntas. I think that's questions in Spanish. Preguntas. Right. I don't want to offend anybody. Just we took French in high school. Well, I took French. I am. I have French tomorrow. Just we took French for three years. Just we. <laughs> I think I'm saying I am took French. Yeah. But I'm just saying it. Just read read the, read the question. We're Ooh. butchering languages here. Good evening, my judges. Apparently, he was one of the cast members. Brian, this week, is being played by one of the cast members of uh, Rocky Horror Picture Show. Go ahead. Question for your big show tonight. <laughs> big show. It's so big. It didn't happen last week. It's Have a big show. Have you run any games involved in mass combat? Oh. Hordes of monsters attacking their party or battle in a war. Yeah. If so, have you used any modified or special rules? I have. Judge Evie has not, right? Nope. I've I have done it one time very successfully. Uh, this was hey Dr. Moggs. This yeah. was uh, way back when I was running Savage Worlds, and I did a Savage Worlds mass combat in a Weird Wars Rome setting where it was Roman legionaries versus werewolves in Gaul, and it went pretty well. I gotta say, it was a it was a good time. You know, uh, the the rules for that essentially. You gave basic stats, like character stats, to every unit, and you sort of still fought it like it was un like, like like characters versus characters. It was probably a bit dumbed down uh, compared to like regular characters fighting each other, but um, I mean it worked. I mean mass combat. I I usually run it narratively. I don't. I'm not really great at doing mass combat. Uh, you know, uh, type adventure things. Why can't I talk tonight? I really suck at this whole questions thing. Do the next part. I haven't done it in recent years. How about that? Oh my god, I suck. Hi, Dr. Suck Mons. so bad. Just you do the next question. Hi. I said hi, Dr. Moggs. No, you didn't. I suck at my answering. Just yes. I, I need to be done. Just keep going. Okay. Number two. If you are running a game for new players at a local game store that is new to DC so what funnel would you start with? Ciao. Ryan. Judge E, I think this is a good question for you because you'd run games at a game store, and no, I haven't. but you would do it if you were requested to do it. What would you run? Oh, well, I have this really great adventure, guys, that I want to run. So I think you should run people. Well, I, there's no, you, a, you do you. I don't okay, don't tell me what I should run. No, 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 I'm saying like, do I have to like actually run it? But like first. No, just tell them what adventure you would run. They would know what adventure you would run. I know which one I want to run. What would it be? I want to run Sl De Death Slaves of Eternity. I don't think it's a zero level funnel though. I don't care. Okay. I'll just run it for them and then they buy better. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's 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 that sounds fair. Mm -hmm. um, I have something actually on my list of what I want to run next. Is it really hot still? No, it's not. I think so. If right oh, now, if right now I was drafted right now to go and run a funnel, I've already kind of picked out that I would probably run They Served Brandolin Red. Uh, if only because uh, it, it's an adventure that I have on my list of adventures that need to be completed on my big adventure list. So that that's right now where I'm stuck with. The other, the other option would be to do, uh, you know, a, a higher level adventure as a funnel. Like I think you could you could uh, start. I think you could run something like uh, like Moon Slaves of the Cannibal Kingdom and start this as a funnel. If you're gonna run a a, a, a at a store uh, over several sessions, maybe start with that kind of adventure with something that's like you you a bunch of characters land on the island and you deal with like you know crash landing and the first session is like picking them off one by one. And the second session is they level up to level one, and you can do it as a first level adventure for a while. Dumb it, weaken it a little bit. I think it's a second level adventure, but that would be a good. I, th I think cause I think mo uh, yeah, Moon Slaves. I think uh, yeah, Moon Slaves. I think it, you could run that for like five or six sessions. So anyway. I have an answer to this question. Which one? Yeah. The next one. The one from Popper. Popper has this dumb question. If you have to sell DCC to new players, you only have ninety minutes. Do you show them a zero level funnel or a level one mini adventure? Level one adventure. What? Yeah, level one adventure. Okay, well, I, I should know that. Because a funnel, you're only going to play a funnel in your very first session of gameplay, and then you're not going to touch a funnel again. I know, but if you run a funnel, and you can, you can like, that's like one of the things that DCC's like kind of known for is their zero level funnels. And you can introduce like all the lux and stuff. I know it's known for that, but 
what has happened in recent years, especially with folks that play other systems, is they see DCC as that game where it's a funnel. When I first played DCC, I heard about it on Roleplay, the Roleplay DNA podcast. I remember Justin Suzuki talking about it. When I first played it, I thought the entire game was about random noobs just running around there with pitchforks yeah, killing things. But if you want to introduce them to that, that's you got to start with. But if you only have, to, if you have to sell the players in one 90 minute session, do you want them to just get their asses handed to them? Or do you want them to like experience the joy of first level characters? They should experience the joy of a, of a funnel because you're not trying to see if they'll like the game, you're seeing if they'll buy the game. No, he said sell it to new players. What exactly. You gotta sell it to them. I mean, to sell them the game. Yeah, like you're like at like a game thing. So obviously we are split, Pop or not. One of us here wants to run a funnel, and one wants to run first level. So I'm sorry. Doctor Mog says Judge James told me to tell me to try to escape from the shrouded fen funnel, and I'm running it Tuesday. That's awesome. It's a Thank really you. good module. So you're gonna have a great time. Okay. Next question. There's one more question. One more question. This is from Stephen. Did we ever? Uh, did we answer this one? I don't know. I don't know either. Read, read it. Read the question. Is from Stephen or Stephen? It's a Stephen. No. How do you not know? There's no A, -A on the end. S T E P E P H E N. Stephen. Let's go with Shao. Come on. Okay. Wait. Oh my god. I actually <laughs> called him that now. I know. Great. Yeah. They're, they're thrilled. Hey guys. Long time listener. First time caller. One of your top five fantasy TTRPG systems. Thanks. Who answered this one? I don't, I top five, I, don't, I didn't answer it. Oh. So oh. my top five that I'm playing now, or would play now, I would say uh, Dungeon Crawl Classics, Demon Fantasy Age, Shadow of the Demon Lord. Fantasy Age, yeah. I said that. Oh, yeah. You'd say Dragon Age be cheating, because one of the, the, that's one of the, that's your thing of the it's still team. Fantasy Age, but it's a Fantasy Age at the same system. So does that count? Is it the same system, or how would that work? So I mean, those three, those three top are the tops for me, uh, and then top five. I know I'm gonna I'm gonna go pull. I'm looking. I have um, to look over there. Um, he said fantasy. So like, you know, I could say Numenera, but that really is kind of science fantasy. So that's kind of cheating a little bit. Um, I you could you could conceivably do some fantasy in Alternity, which is another of my favorite systems. But I wouldn't want to. But you could do it. Uh, Man, that's that's tough. I'm kind of capping out at three. Uh, if I, I if I, I you know oh you know what I would say the cipher system with um, uh, gods of the fall that would be a, a solid number four, and then uh, for number five, AD and D second edition. Don't get any of that fifth edition in here. D definitely don't get none of that fifth edition in here. Bonus question: Any tips for running Escape from the Shrouded Fen? Yeah, if you're running it online. Make sure to get uh, to have the showums ready, the pictures ready for all the scenes. I like to just have the PDF up to screen share the PDF, or you could take copies. There's a lot of pictures you can show in Shrouded Fen that you might want to show the players as they're playing. If you're playing it in person, print those out and have them with you to give away as hand, get out as handouts. You know, so that's the best thing about the appendixes that come, or the appendices that come with any of the Purple Sorcerer adventures. You have a big giant appendix of all kinds of extra stuff you can hand your players. And they love that, I think players love that kind of crap. So, these are great questions. Again, feel free to send us questions at dccjudgeevie at gmail.com. They all go to her, but she makes me answer all of them. So it's a That's good deal. That's not true, I answered some today. So let's go on to the next segment. All right, this is gonna be a cool part of the show here, I think. We're gonna try something different here. Uh, we have quite a few of you watching live, and what I'm going to ask is please feel free to be very active in this conversation. <laughs> freckles. Uh, be, what is what is Freckles going to know about this question, though? I don't know, but I feel like she should be more. Active. Uh, not to say I don't. I, I would I, I all like like discourage Freckles from watching the show. I'm just saying I don't know if she's going to have this answer to these questions. Want to have any questions on this? So she should. She should. We're going to discuss online gaming post COVID and. One of my recent videos that I put on the channel was me essentially chastising people for not running more DCC <laughs> at Dungeon Con Online. And success! Great video. There are 60% more DCC <laughs> adventures now. I'm not going to say it was all me, but I think at least a few of them came from me yeah. throwing out the guilt trip. That's horrible. So, Stop. Just look at my... You have to look at my elbow. All right. All right. Look at my elbow. Okay. 
No, you have to. All right. So, um, <laughs> I believe that DungeonCon Online is like approaching 100 total events, and 16 of them are DCC or MCC, which is great because you think about it, um, it's a fifth edition convention. So, I, I think the idea of expecting it to be all DCC would be pretty hard. But that said, is that is it too late to sign up to run one? I don't know the answer to that. Um, you could go try. I, 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 I couldn't I couldn't answer the question, Pop or not. I'm not I'm not sure. Yeah. Uh, I submitted mine when the uh, submissions opened up. But go to tabletop events and just take a look for Dungeon Con online. And at the end of the uh, um, later on in the why is this why is this mouse sticky? Like and I told him to wash his hands for his place down here. Um, sorry, kid. Um, I'm gonna put a link to the event, obviously somewhere in the notes below. Or you know what, do I will copy it here. This is the Goodman Games one. There, I put it in the in the chat window. So I don't know if you can still sign up for events or not. But that said, I don't know if there was a little less excitement for it than with the last con we just had, Spawn of Cyclops con. Or potentially, is is there something to be said right now that online gaming might be at risk given you know the the the, the pandemic sort of entering into a latter stages, people going out more, not just going out. Cause, I mean, I did a lot of online gaming pre-COVID, but people want to go out more. So that that's where the question is, you know, you know, what what are, what are your thoughts, Evie? I mean, how do you feel? Mm -hmm. You're not even paying attention to the question. I am. Okay. Well, give us your give us your feedback. How? What do you think the world post pandemic is going to look like with online gaming? Um, I think the people that did it before COVID will still do it. You know, like you. Um, but and I think some of the other people do it. But the people that are like really hardcore, like only doing it because they're in COVID, are just gonna like completely ditch it, like all online gaming altogether. Do you think people will realize the convenience of it? Because, you know... Some people that actually enjoy it, yes. Other people that are just doing it because of COVID. Like we had every Sunday yeah. game at 10 a.m. And it's kind of nice just to kind of wake up, have coffee, have a relaxing morning, and then start start playing without having to clean up the house. Bob Brown says there will definitely be more competition for people's t limited time. That is definitely true. I mean, I, I'm experiencing that and that I'm trying to maintain four active campaigns right now and I'm feeling the strain on the one that we had just started for Saturdays uh, just because I think that some other players are are too um, so that's that is going to be challenging I mean I, I still hope to I, I don't I, I think my regular Sunday and Wednesday games are pretty solid and I am hoping to continue my like every few weeks MCC campaign but yeah I think that people are going to want to do more I don't think they're, they're going to have things to do on Saturdays Dr. Mog says, I feel like RPG players are cleverer than the muggles of the world will want to stay locked down a little longer. I agree, but let me tell you this, Dr. Moggs. I personally would like to have... We, we had the first sleepover this weekend. We did. So well, we, everyone got tested, so it was That's cool. true. We had some folks come over that were that were tested for, for coronavirus, and then they they were here Friday night, and then, then you went back to their house last night. Yep. So right that, then and there, that's that's a little bit of, an, jump. of a pressure on time. And personally, like I'm doing all this painting for miniatures because I'm really excited to get back to playing with minis. Not that I can't play with Evie and Cooper, but to have, you know, people that want to paint their own minis. What the heck is that? What? On the wall. What wall? What is that? I told you what it is. It's my one employee brought that back for me from Senegal. Anyway, let, no one else can see it. So let's let's get to the questions here. <laughs> Paul Brown said, I plan to keep two of my online groups going. Um, and that's the count that I'm really hoping for. Although, I, again, my MCC group, we're early mornings every few weeks. It's a really tight group. And speaking of folks that are awesome in that tight group, Gordon Cooper, who's in that group, just said, I, I have every intention of continuing to game online and game in person. Sometimes online is better for my out-of-town players. I mean, that's a good point, Evie. I mean, think about the players. Where do the people live that play my Sunday game? Do you know? So Chicago. Not a damn one of them lives in Chicago. <laughs> Canada. Two of them live in Canada. That was right. Which is not any, well, I guess it's close to Chicago, but it's not Chicago. Georgia. 
None of them live in Georgia. Texas. One lives in Pittsburgh. You're just guessing. And one lives in, in, in Massachusetts. Yeah, no one lives in Texas. That's not true. <laughs> a lot of people live in Texas. All my exes live in Texas. Why? Did you know that? Why do they all go to Texas? All my exes live in Texas. All the exes in Texas? All my exes live in Texas. That's like a fun saying. I know. In Texas. You know what you should say? You should start saying all my exes live in Texas more and say you came up with it. That's how the song goes, Evie. Oh, um, <laughs> Greg says, so should I prefer in person, but it's easier to game online. I, I really do like the social atmosphere of in person, but I mean, it does require you to to kind of clean up and be be ready to game. Actual stuff you have to do, like prepare. Like, I'm, like, wearing, I'm wearing yeah. green swishy shorts yeah, right you now. You would wear those at an in-person game anyway. I wouldn't wear it to a, a gaming store. Well, yeah, but we're talking like, at our house? Yeah. Papa and I had a, their first in-person game last week with all vaccinated friends. That's awesome. I want some vaccinated people to come play Frostgrave with me. Like, really, really bad. Really, really, really bad. I want to play am Frostgrave I, so bad. Am I not good enough for Frostgrave? You can play Frostgrave? Wow. But how if often do you come down, How often do you guys have stairs to play Frostgrave, Dad? If I'm not asking you, right? How, like, I think at some point, Evie, it would be nice if you came in and said, Dad, can we play a game? But you don't. I have to chase you down. I think Judge Evie is just, you know, I think I think you're phoning it in right really? now. You're phoning it in. What does that even mean? You're just phoning it in. What is phoning it I in? I think you're, you're you're in the late stages here. It sounds like you're like you're like gonna, you're gonna go with a Michael Strahan here in a second, aren't you? Huh? You're gonna go Michael Strahan. You're gonna you're gonna you're gonna walk off the show at some point and say you're moving on. Why? I don't know. Why would I do that? I'm just saying. What? Off to get a new co-host. <laughs> Judge Evie, what, what, how, how do you think your gaming will change uh, post-COVID? There'll be a lot more shrub games. You think that. there'll be more shrub games? Yeah, because we're trying to put games together, right? But it's all weird, but like when we can just like do it like, like no one wants to go on Who's going to run your shrub games? I think John wants to run one. What's he going to run? Demon Lord. Is he running Demon Lord? Yeah, we, okay. we're setting up a session zero, but we don't know when to do it. No, that's pretty awesome. I think yeah. that's that's I, I'm I can stand by with you playing Demon Lord. Yeah. I would much rather my kids play Shadow the Demon Lord than play D and D five A. Just just saying. I think everyone wants that for their kids. I, I think that's I think that's <laughs> the case. But like a couple folks here have said like vaccines and stuff and Paw Pronouts play with vaccinated friends. Our folks that came up over We Were Hard Me Vaccinated, um, you know, is is I guess you know that how 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 do you ask that question to folks you don't know that well at, or or I mean I don't know there's some friends of mine I'd feel weird to ask them every week did you get your shot so you can come over did you, or or have you been tested you know how do we know you're you're okay you know you just, you just say you either get tested or you can't come all right but like but and then if they try to be like oh I got tested you'd be like well then show me so you're gonna would you say you use you use like the online gameplay for uh, or the online gaming for when people don't want to get the shot. What if one person doesn't want to get the shot and wants to play? What do you do? Screw them. <laughs> I was thinking you were going to say, <laughs> you were gonna say something like, <laughs> like, oh, just just go ahead and have them like like <laughs> Skype into the, the game or, or Zoom into the game or something like that. But no, no, just, just <laughs> screw them. You know, the heck, they don't. They get stuck at level zero still. Next game they show up. <laughs> what is that? It's oh, it's a dog barking. Shannon posts something weird. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Um, it's going to be interesting though, right? I mean, it's going to be a weird kind of transition as people want to do more things out and about. Years ago, one of the things, this is how I ended up gaming with Andy so much. Originally, it was... His, the concept with Andy was this get get out and game thing. We were trying to do oh, where yeah. we kind of play games in public. We would go to, like, and the we would go to restaurants and the parks and the Renaissance Festival and run games there just to see say we could run games in public in the middle of a crowded Italian restaurant. Remember that? We were right in the middle. We were right in the middle. I mean, the big reserve thing. We reserve thing. We were playing like freaking Numenera in the middle of a restaurant during dinner. <laughs> that was crazy. The shit we did for that blog sometimes. It's a great blog. I think you should start blogging again. Hell no. I don't want to run and write again. 
Then you Why would I do that? Blog sometimes, then it was terrible. I've had a blog. I have one published module. I'm done. I'm good to go. Like I, I, I can, I can. <laughs> this stuff for me is bucket list stuff. I can say I did it. I can say I have a blog. Check. Okay. Did I ever write a, a, a role playing game product? Check. Check. Did I ever ha- co host a show with a with a tween? I'm Check. A tween. <laughs> I'm... Paul pronounced says my group were like minded, which made it easier. We've been discussing it for months. It would absolutely be an odd conversation with strangers. I've already had some weird conversations at work related to this topic. I think most <laughs> of my conversations at work about anything about this topic anything about are weird. It's weird. Yeah. The best advice this is Dr. Moggs for non vax players to have them roll fortitude and then kill their character immediately. But they show up at your house. You gotta you gotta move them out. You know? If they show up at your house and they're not tested, they have a vaccine, just like open the door for a sec with a mask on and then throw like some I, dice out and a character the, sheet and they're stuck the up. The plus there. side is I, I, I think I'd be comfortable asking people who game with this typically do you want to get a, a vaccine? You know, you, you have a vaccine and you want to get one. I'll give it to you, but yeah. do you do you have one? Uh, but all right, so let's 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 move this on to the next portion here. Um, gaming and game stores. When is that? Because that's sort of like the between cons thing, right? Are we there yet? Are any of you gaming in game stores yet? Do, are they doing that? I mean, you have to have a pretty big table to maintain the, the social distancing, right? But if everyone's vaccinated, I mean, does it matter if your masks are on? I have not gamed at a game store. We have not been in a game store since pre-COVID. It is true. I don't know what we're going to do. I think for DCC... Um, DCC day, I'm going to go in a game store, but I'm not going to sit there and play. Are there still game stores? <laughs> no, they all closed. No, I. Well, that's not funny. I think so, a lot of them did. Like oh. that's that's oh. dark, man. Why would you say that? Because <laughs> I thought it was a joke. It's not <laughs> funny. It's not it's like an essential service. It's not like people had to have their their games that way. <laughs> yes, there are still game stores out there. I think a lot of them are struggling though. Yeah. So how do you how do you how do you support them? I think DCC days is one of the ways to do that, mm-hmm. but I'm not going to stay in a store and game. But let's let's be honest. I, I think there are some. I say that too much. I think the let's be honest thing. Let's be I, not not honest. See, it's like a double negative. So just honest. How many of us actually like playing in game stores? Like, raise your hand. I I don't see any hands raised. Is your hand up? I don't personally, I think it was something I I like to do to meet more gamers, but I've found I've met more gamers in the last year through online gaming than I ever had meeting them in stores. Conventions is different. I've met a lot of gamers in conventions. Conventions is different than a game store where there's people going in and out and and you can't even go pee. Dr. Mog said it right ahead. Playing in the store is too noisy and busy for me. You know, and or you get interrupted by people that come up and say, what are you playing? Or you have a moment, like the one moment where you had to fight with the people that were the 5e players. I almost had a throwdown because of the that one dude was like fighting with the players. And it's like, I'm going to throw my whole court book at you. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I've never been a big fan of that. You can't even go pee in half of them. You can pee, you I think, in all of them. Pee. No, you're pretty sure. It's not a question of can you pee. Do you want to pee? Do you want to pee at those places? And the answer is usually no. It was just Phantom in Pittsburgh you couldn't pee at. You had to leave and go to the Starbucks to pee because the bathroom didn't work. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Gordon hasn't played in a game store in several years. And don't foresee doing it again until the pandemic is just a memory. And uh, Shans is his store and Worcester uh, survives. That's cool. Um, and then uh, Popperon says his LGS never slowed down and required a mask. Really? No mask required? That's just like, make a luck roll walking in. I don't know. I'm not there. No. No. Even with this shot, I'm not there. Because I think if you're not going to make you wear a mask, what other things are you not worrying about in that store? Like cleaning. Just for basic cleaning. Uh, <laughs> Dr. Moggs' store had, the store I went to had no light and no toilet seat. Wait a second. You mean no light in the bathroom or no light at all? Because that's going to be really hard to pick the product you want to get. You show up, you're trying to get the DCC module, you end up with a 5e thing. That would be like the saddest day. I I think that if there's one thing that's going to hurt the stores going forward is, you know, it is exceptionally easy to buy role-playing stuff online. It 
always has been, but now it's even easier and so incentivized to do it. There's always some great deals or free shipping or something to get it. You know, I mean, I made, when, when I was getting my miniatures, I just ordered a bunch of minis for Stargrave, uh, a bunch of Reaper Bones, and I mean, I just got them all right from Reaper. Uh, it was over $100 in the order, so it was free shipping. And since it was as much as it was, they were giving me a bunch of free miniatures with it, like 25 bucks in free minis. Why would I not just get it directly from them? Um, you know, I think that's going to be the challenge with the game stores. I think that post-pandemic, I think that they're going to have... It was tough before, it's going to be harder now. And no. I felt bad, but I also don't have a local game store I still feel is our home. That was the same as Phantom of the Attic in Pittsburgh, which was our home. I have not had a, a home game store since moving out here to, to Philly. I have a question. Yeah. This is like super off topic, okay? But like, it just came into my mind. No, go for it. How do people that play Magic play that over Zoom? Like, how do they play Magic the Gathering over Zoom? I, I don't know the answer, as I don't play Magic the Gathering. I think there is a way to register your cards online, though, what cards you have. If you get your decks a certain way, and you can actually play in a virtual tabletop with those decks. I feel like people who play card games are going to go back to the stores faster than people who play role play. That's a really good point, you know? And the, the same with miniatures gaming. People who play Warhammer 40K and Warhammer and, you know, other mini space gaming or X-Wing, they're going to want to play at, game, at places that have all that cool terrain. That's why I have to have all the cool terrain so they want to play here. Yeah. This Dr. Moggs, the store they, uh, the store I like now charges people a subscription to play. It works and keeps the riffraff away. So you pay a subscription to play. What? How much is it? How much? Do you, do you, do you mind sharing that? Of how much they charge you? I've heard of having to pay like a couple bucks a seat um, in a separate game area. There was a store in Pittsburgh that did that, I think. Gordon's been, I've gamed at a gaming coffee house, reluctantly at first, but it was very enjoyable. I've also gamed at board game cafes, and they're great. I think board game cafes sound like they'd be fun, and that's a whole different experience, though, with board games. Um, I mostly don't like them that much as a main hobby. For me, it's always like something you do when you're waiting to role play or play something else. Um, so, all right, we're at like 934. We're going to wrap things up here and move on. Up. Good. Good conversation, though, folks. I really appreciate everyone tossing out their comments and being a part of the chat. So, uh, Kickstarter shout-outs. The, the big one right now is the, uh, the Shelf File of Holding, which I personally think the name Gorgonizer is my favorite <laughs> name for that. <laughs> I think it's the shelf Onomicon is one of the names also they're yeah. talking about. 18 days to go. It's at 30K right now, so it's it's... It's blowing up. I'm in for six of those things. And I think it'll be enough to hold all the stray modules we have back there. So I'm pretty comfortable with it, with that. Uh, I, I don't, I'm not going to put the notes in. I was, for several minutes this week, I had backed uh, the Q Workshop uh, Kickstarter for the Witcher dice. Oh. And aside from the fact that it's brutally expensive... Uh, I was backing at the level that gave me the full wooden dice poker box for 400 and some odd dollars. But I backed out of that, so I'm not there anymore. Because your mom would have killed me. Yeah. I don't want to die. No. <laughs> Road crew shout outs. Uh, Dungeon Con Online coming up. I think it's the 29th and 30th. They seem to have cut off May 28th and 31st. So Bye. it was four days, now it's two. Bye. Kind of weird. Uh, there are a couple seats left in my DCC Lankmar game that Sunday. I'm running the heist from 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. noon Eastern. So if you want to play with me, uh, come join in the, the game. It'll be a fun adventure. Or it won't be. One or the other. All right. Where can people find us online, Evie? Uh, they can find us at I Live for Crit on Twitter. Living for crits on Instagram. Not updated. Instagram. Not updated ever. And starts living for crits on YouTube. So be safe, be healthy, be kind, and I'm gonna say, Gorgonizer. No, I'm just gonna say, no one's gonna understand.
Good night, everybody. Good night.